Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk about my country and the need for peace and freedom for my people. A country with the ancient civilization which has been destroyed by 35 years rule of a fundamentalist regime. A country rich in resources and in culture turned into a country with 70% of the population living on the poverty line and epicenter of terrorism and fundamentalism. Today in my country respect for human rights and freedom constitute the most serious crimes punishable by long imprisonment, torture and execution. The ruling mullahs set up hangings in public for advocating freedom to intimidate the people. This is a picture of prisoners who were executed, were hanged about 10 days ago. Over the past three decades, 120,000 people have been executed for political reasons. Hundreds of thousands more have been imprisoned and suffered torture. Over the past few months, uh, there has been much noise about a new trend towards moderation. This is an illusion created by the mullahs and advocated by the lobbies. Rouhani is neither a moderate nor the current regime in Iran has the capacity for reform. The core of mullahs constitution is the absolute rule of the supreme leader, which is completely against democratic values. Therefore, any departure from this suppressive policies would herald the beginning of the end of this regime. Let me say a few words on nuclear negotiation. I know there are different views on how to deal with this issue, but let's begin with common ground. First, all agree that one regime must not obtain nuclear bomb or capability. Second, there is a general agreement that all efforts should be made to avoid war. Third, it's undisputed that the Mullah regime took one step back and agreed to the Geneva Accord under pressure and not due to change of heart. The regime was terrified that rising popular this content coupled with worsening economic condition and international sanction would trigger nationwide uprisings against the regime. Fourth, it is also generally accepted that the interim accord suffers from serious shortcomings which must be fixed. Therefore, those who truly want to see an end to the nuclear weapons program of the Mullah regime should realize that easing the sanctions and making concessions to the Mullah is a recipe for disaster. It gives them time to advance their nuclear weapons program while containing economic crisis and suppressing the a growing public discontent. Sadly, the international community is turning a blind eye on the regime atrocities under the pretext of not putting in danger the nuclear negotiation. To avoid such disastrous outcome, the following must be done. Implement the U.S. Security Council resolution including ending the enrichment 
of uranium and stopping Iraq heavy water project. To sign the addition protocol and start the SNAP inspections, the international community must also demand an end to systematic and grave human rights violation, as well as its meddling in other countries, in particular in Syria and Iraq. It's regrettable that the free world turns a blind eye to crime against humanity under the illusion that appeasement would lead to change of heart in a despotic regime. Ladies and gentlemen, another aspect of this misguided policy is the case of nearly 3,000 members of the Iranian opposition movement in Iraq, which due to misconduct of the UN and misguided policy of the US has turned into an emergency humanitarian issue. Since 2009, the residents have been under a constant attack in Ashraf and Camp Liberty. On September 1st, 52 residents were massacred by Iraqi forces and these are pictures of 52 members of our movement were killed by Iraqi forces in 1st September. Many were handcuffed and then executed. Seven more, including six women, were taken hostage. We recently established that the Iraqi government has uh, secretly made the martyrs of September 1st massacre without informing their families. They didn't even tell them where their loved ones were buried. This evidence proves the direct role of the Iraqi government in this crime. What has been the reaction of international community? UN and some government have only condemned the crime without taking any measure to identify those responsible and bring them to justice. They have not even started an independent investigation. They have done nothing about the security of the residents in Camp Liberty. I would like to call on Norwegian government to initiate an, an international effort to release the hostages and also to conduct an independent investigation regarding the September 1st massacre. must refer the investigation to International Criminal Court. Dear friends, the residents were promised by UN and US that soon after relocation to Camp Liberty, they will be relocated to safety outside Iraq. Two years later, only 9% of the residents have been relocated. All the residents are protected persons under the Fourth Geneva Convention. They have been declared by UNHCR as asylum seekers and refugees and are protected by international law. Where is that protection? For every three persons that have been relocated outside Iraq, one has been killed. The reality is even harsher than Statistics. All residents are in serious danger. But my question today is for the international community. Why silence and why inaction in the face of such humanitarian issue? I have come here today to ask the 
Norwegian government to take the initiative to break this silence. Norway has a rich tradition of defending human rights and has been the pioneer of protecting its values and that of defenders of human rights. You know that the NCRI is an alternative of Mullah's regime that believes in a republic, democratic and pluralist, based on separation between religious and state, believes in equality, gender equality, believes in democracy and freedom for people in Iran and all of the world, especially for the people in the region. For this reason, I think your support for the uh, member of PMR, especially in liberty, it helps to peace and security in the region and in the world. Thank you.